this time it's all about Foley. And we have the gorgeous, the magnificent, the genius Sue Harding. Okay, I, f I feel like a Hollywood star. <laughs> My name is Sue Harding. I'm a Foley artist from London. A Foley artist is uh, someone who recreates the soundtrack for a film or TV drama or animation and also increasingly uh, games. Uh, we uh, recreate the entire soundtrack from the sound of the clothes that the actors are wearing to their footsteps and then everything that they interact with, whether it's a food and eating to uh, fighting or having car crashes or anything in between, anything that the actors touch, we make a sound for. Everything can be recreated. It's just about breaking it down into elements. Although I don't have my own personal alien in my props bag, I look at this particular alien and I see that it's a uh, uh, gloopy or wet, or maybe it has bony feet. So we look at all the different uh, uh, characteristics of the creature and break that down. So we could give uh, the footsteps maybe with a hard edge or a claw. Um, we might use curtain hooks or some maybe even bone or, or wood or stone to make those kind of gravelly, um, scratchy sounds. And then we look at what else is going on. Is it dripping or uh, is it dry or whatever it is, we can then use various props to re remake those sounds. And as soon as you give it some thought, uh, it's not so hard to uh, come up with um, ways of making these sounds. We love uh, fruit and vegetables for anything that is gory or, um, or disgusting. Lots of, uh, lots of nice sounds can come from a squashed melon or orange or something like that. Um, but yeah, it just, it just takes some time to kind of work that out. I kind of discovered Foley by accident. I was uh, looking to go down a more production route. Uh, I was interested in documentary mostly. Uh, uh, but whilst I was uh, applying for university, I took a job at a post-production studio where they had a Foley studio at their facility. Uh, and I walked into the studio one day and they were playing the film back with just the Foley. No dialogues, no music, no effects, just the Foley. And to me, it was the perfect film. It didn't need anything else. It was so beautiful. Uh, so I, I asked more and found out what it was. Um, and I increasingly went into the studio to watch the Foley artists and learn more about the craft. I've always been a little obsessed with sound, but I never imagined that there was um, a career opportunity with this strange obsession with the sound of footsteps. Uh, so when I discovered Foley, it was kind of like it all fell into place for me. But it's always been, I, I always think of sound as a, uh, and sound designers as something that you need to be uh, sat behind a computer. It's very, um, uh, you need engineering experience and that kind of thing, which is absolutely true, but not for Foley. And there's a lot of uh, performers who are Foley artists or ex-performers or have some kind of performance bones in their body because it really helps with the movement. There's many ex-dancers and that kind of thing. I have zero skills with, um, with computers. So uh, I just perform the sounds. Uh, I have um, somebody who records and mixes the sounds and then that will be passed to somebody else who will then edit the sounds. Uh, and then that goes to somebody else who then mixes the sounds. So it's, we're a very small part in a big process. There's two, two things. There's the technical side where we might fill in gaps where there's ADR. Uh, increasingly with a lot of the bigger Hollywood style films, it's shot on green screen. Uh, the sets or, uh, aren't, don't exist. Uh, or if it is a set in a studio, the beautiful marble palace is actually made from plywood. So we need to make it sound that it's this beautiful palace. Uh, and also, you know, if it's a fight scene, of course, the actors aren't actually hitting each other or stabbing each other or shooting each other. So we need to make what's happening on screen uh, 
become believable to the audience. You learn more tricks as you go along and you, you know, you become maybe faster and you learn new techniques. Every time I do a, a new job, I'm learning, working with different people. Uh, so it's just as with every job, you're gaining experience every time you work on a new project. So that comes into your, uh, your repertoire, I guess. It's vital to uh, perform it live to the screen because uh, even the uh, simplest sound effects, uh, you have to convey emotion. So, um, uh, for example, if it was something like a glass being put onto a table, you could be tired and sort of be accidental and clumsy with it, or you could be angry and slam it down, or whatever the emotion the actor is, uh, uh, is feeling at that time travels through their body to that glass. And also, when you see something in a film, uh, it's there for a reason. So if that piece of paper is being scrunched up or the glass is being put down, uh, the director has told the actor to do that in a certain way, so we need to make sure that those moments are, are caught with the right sound as well. When we record, we record 100% of what's happening on the screen, and maybe only 30% of what we record will be used. But we don't know when we're recording what the director exactly wants to hear. We'll have some information from the sound supervisor. Certainly certain scenes will be more Foley heavy than others. Uh, but we need to give them the full palette so that uh, if they're sat in the mix and somebody suddenly says, you know what, I want to hear somebody, I want to hear that person in the corner scratching their head, it's there and they can raise the fader and we, we've covered it. I try to get it in the first or second take, but that's, it can also depend on the other things that are happening in the room. So maybe the recordist wants to go again or try it with a different microphone. And stylistically, we might try out a surface that then when we play it back, we don't like, so we might move it to somewhere else. Uh, so it's all, we try and capture it the first or second time and then we listen to it and check that it works and then maybe we readjust or try something different or add. It's all about layers. So it might be nice, but it just needs whatever the sound may be. It's a nice base layer, but we need to add extra little bits. I think ever since I've started, the technology has been there and is advancing to uh, make some Foley sounds. But what a Foley artist brings to uh, the production is uh, the emotion that we were discussing that you can't get from a computer. And also it's very time consuming to go through libraries and libraries and to find each sound effect um, and to give those. I'm sure you can, you can do fancy things on the computer, I know, I don't know how they do it, but uh, that's very time consuming. But uh, if you come into the Foley studio, you get a bespoke sound performed to the picture. Uh, so I don't think we're going anywhere just yet. There are a few things like, um, you know, when I first started, we'd do horses all the time. And now very rarely do we do horses because they can easily go out and record a horse galloping across a field. Uh, and it will never have the same weight and that kind of thing. But it's changing a little bit, but we're still very much present. Technology does affect things, and taste affects things, and the style of films affect things. Uh, so often, you know, a lot of the films um, working on the moment, there'll be sort of fantastical creatures, and so these things don't actually exist. There isn't a sound effect for them, so, <laughs> it, uh, so we're creating a new sound for each of these characters and giving them um, the character that, that, that they, you can see. We need to give them a sound for that. The very first album I owned was Stand Up by Jethro Tull. And I've been a true follower of all of Ian Anderson's work throughout the years. He has an incredible roster of outstanding songs and albums. Not only the usage of the flute as a dominant lead instrument makes Ian Anderson's work very characteristic. He writes intricate lyrics and his melodies are memorable and special. Of course, he draws on the rich English folk tradition, which makes it even more exceptional. 
Walk Into Light was Ian Anderson's first official solo album after A was released as a Chath Hotel album. It is quite synth laden and foreshadowed under wraps in that way. There's not a single bad song on the album. Outstanding track, of course, is the opening track, Fly By Night, which features one of the best riffs of all time. It was featured in All Saints and Live House in Alabama. 